This is The Extra Point, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast, sponsored by your Phoenix Suns. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Thanks for How's your time going? today. Oh, it's real good. Mark McClune here in Phoenix, where you once uh, came to town and had a perfect evening. So, <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's good to, good to talk to you today and appreciate the time. Know you're busy, so let's get right to it. All right. Um, tweet of the week I saw was somebody was voting for you because you were a good commander and chief. So I think that goes well with uh, with, with, uh, with what your cause and, and Veterans Day. So uh, just tell me about what's on your mind as we approach this NFL weekend. Yeah, listen, you know, I, I, I didn't serve. Um, I, I, you know, at the end of my career, I suffered a pretty traumatic leg injury uh, that almost cost me my leg and my life and uh, was in a bad place for a long time. Uh, my prognosis was not very good. I was, you know, suppressed. I felt isolated. Um, you know, I was, I was ashamed of my leg and what it looked like and what it represented. Um, and then something happened. I got access to military medical care uh, and it changed my life. You know, as a civilian, I got to go to the greatest uh, rehabilitation clinic in the world for a leg injury. Uh, it's called the Center for the Intrepid. And I got to rehab alongside our servicemen and women, um, you know, and, and I got to see the, the, the courage and resiliency and, and shared struggle up, up close and personal. And, and again, it had such a profound effect on me. Uh, it's the first place I said out loud that I wanted to try and play football again, uh, which was crazy at the time. And, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to get to rehab over the course of the next two years there. And there's no way I stepped foot on a football field if it wasn't for the people down there in the place uh, that it is. And, and again, uh, I know what it meant to me when I needed it most, and, and it's changed my life forever. I'm a better father and husband because of it. And this is about flipping that back around right here on Veterans Day um, and, and moving forward. Uh, I think as civilians so often, we, we don't know what to do or say, and, and we do just fall back to thank you. And this is about uh, really doing more. There isn't a right thing to, to say or do. Uh, and it's really about reaching out uh, and digging deeper. Um, there's, there's so many little things that you can do. Go find a veteran in your community and um, you know, start a conversation. Uh, have a meal. Take them out to coffee. Go volunteer at a veteran facility. Uh, dig deeper. Um, again, make that kind of connection that, that, that really can make a difference. So many of our veterans come back and I think feel isolated. All right? They've just left the greatest team uh, on the planet uh, and, and, again, are transitioning back to civilian life. And it's difficult. Uh, and this is about, I, I think, not just on Veter Day, Veterans Day celebrating them um, and making them feel valued, but every day here going forward. And again, it, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Uh, love partnering with USAA. Listen, for everybody out there, if you're wondering what you can do in your community, go to USAA.com slash Veterans Day. There's a ton of resources and information on there, uh, again, for what you can do. All right, so you said it out loud. I want to play football again. How did... Re doing your rehab alongside members of our, our military gets you back on the field? Yeah, listen, I think it was really about the, uh, the courage to fail, right? Listen, when I said it, I was scared to death. I couldn't even stand on my leg. They were still talking about amputating it. And when I said it, uh, it sounded crazy. Uh, but again, to be down there, uh, again, I was hiding behind the bandages on my leg uh, when I arrived and to get to go down there and see, you know, amputees and double amputees and, and, and bad burn victims bearing their scars out in the open and moving forward with their life, uh, it, it, it really had a profound effect on me. Um, and again, to, to get to kind of share in that experience, I didn't feel alone anymore, right? I, I, got, I had to bond with uh, a bunch of people that were, were going through something very similar uh, to me. Uh, and it just had such a, an amazing effect on me to be a part of that kind of team environment, that kind of positivity, the push and the support uh, that I needed at that time in my life. Um, and again, if I, if I didn't say that out loud, uh, if I didn't get to, you know, kind of continue my rehab down there over the next two years, again, I, I don't come back and play football. Uh, it's just a fact. And, and again, to be on this side of it now, I'm so grateful, uh, you know, for everything that I've been through. I'm, I'm a better dad and, and husband because of it. And, and again, for me, it's about um, kind of, you know, pushing that forward now, right? Again, to our veterans and what can I do uh, to help and, and connect, and, and it's really about this. There isn't, there isn't a right thing to say, right? And I, and I do know that feeling, and again, get beyond it. Uh, dig deeper. Uh, go push yourself and, and make a connection with a veteran in, in your community. In the moments after the injury, if I had told you one day you're going to say in an interview on the Extra Point podcast that I'm grateful for, for my story, what would you have told me? Yeah, I would have said you're crazy. <laughs> Listen, I woke up every day uh, 
hating the side of my leg for a long, long time. It just represented everything that I would never be able to do again. Uh, all my limitations, was, it was ugly and grotesque, and I was ashamed of it. Um, and it's so funny now that, that today I, I, I get up and I enjoy putting shorts on and, 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 and bearing my scars, and I'm incredibly proud of my leg and what it represents and everything that it's been through and what it can go do. Uh, and again, I, I, I'm not in that kind of mindset if it's not for uh, the folks in the military. And, and again, my opportunity to get down to go to the Center for the Intrepid and, uh, and, and so grateful for that uh, when I needed it most. And again, this is really about paying that forward. And you get to tell that story the entire NFL weekend, which we look forward to to hearing you talk about. Uh, wondering if uh, we could get a thought on the NFL weekend coming up, specifically the Arizona Cardinals, uh, Kyler Murray going uh, going against Aaron Rodgers. It looks like uh, the, the entire country is going to get the Dallas game. Only us in Arizona and New York get to watch the Jets and the Cardinals. But do you have a thought on – Kyler Murray, how he's progressed as a quarterback this year, and, and and can the Cardinals make a run at the playoffs here? Yeah, I love I love the progression that I've seen from Kyler. Listen, this guy's played in the air raid offense his entire life, you know, high school, college, uh, even as several for several years in the league, and now to transition to the offense he's in, you know, where they're playing multiple tight end sets, obviously big time run game with James Conner, but to really I think see his progression to getting under center more, running you know some play action pass and bootlegs. Uh, listen, they're, they're building something special down there. Uh, I think this is the only offense in the NFL. I think they're perfect. Uh, 13 out of 13 in goal-to-go situations. It's just crazy. I can't tell me many times I've seen a free rusher bearing down on Kyler and, and not even be able to pull his flag. Um, listen, it's, it's just a special, a special player, and I think he's really uh, grown into this offense, right? It's not all on his shoulders now. Uh, he can really let the offense work towards him. Uh, and Marvin Harrison Jr. becoming more and more incorporated. You're seeing the the rapport there. Uh, and I think this is a team that's going to have something to say come the end of the year. Well, speaking of perfect, there was one night out here in the desert that you tortured us. You went 18 of 19 on a Monday night for 232 yards, three touchdowns, and a 157.1 quarterback rating. And our friend Howard Balzer, who's been covering the NFL for many, many years says quarterback rating should be much higher. And I'm sure that night, if we go back and look at it, it should have been. Um, Speaking of your own progression from from the number one pick, just like Kyler, to getting to that point, there were some struggles along the way, and Kyler certainly had his. Are there any similarities in your journey and his that maybe he can get to the point of almost having a perfect uh, uh, game out in Glendale? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think for everybody that's been a top pick, uh, especially as a quarterback, you, you know the the weight. That's, that you carry with that, right? The expectations of, a, of a, a team, an organization, a franchise, a city, and a fan base. Like, it's, it's a lot for a young kid to come into. Uh, and you got to find your own way. And I think that, that certainly this, the shared experience of struggle, right? Like, nobody has it easy. The, the, there's nobody that, that it, uh, is immune to it. And I think the commonality is, is certainly the resiliency to keep pushing through it, right? And to keep growing and learning. Um, and, and certainly have seen that from Kyler here. Uh, again, he is such a unique skill set. Uh, and again, to see him kind of transition from this, you know, incredibly wide open, you know, multiple uh, wide outs into, you know, tight ends and getting under center. And I think a lot of people thinking he couldn't do it. And, and he's really proved that thus far this year. Uh, and I'm excited to see where it, where it continues to go. Again, I, I'm, I like what they're building. I know they're on a bit of a hot streak. We'll see if they can keep it going versus the Jets this weekend. What do you see from Aaron Rodgers? Is he, is he still got some tricks up his sleeve, or is this kind of trending towards the permanent darkness retreat? No, listen, he uh, he can still throw it, right? Again, it, it's different to play. Speaking of expectations, you know, playing for the New York Jets and the New York media, obviously we, we've seen what that's looked like these last couple of years for him. Uh, but it's hard, you know, coming back from a leg injury. I, I think we've got to give him some time. Uh, they're obviously coming, I think, off their best best performance of the year last week. Uh, we'll see if they can kind of keep that that momentum going against a, a really good Cardinals team. And the Ravens last night, I think I said out loud, I think they can beat the Chiefs. But, I mean, the last couple of years, nobody's beaten the Chiefs. Do you think the Ravens could finally get past the Chiefs and, and represent the AFC in the Super yeah, Bowl? Yeah, listen, they absolutely have the ability to do so. They have the talent. They have the coaching staff. Uh, to do it. Uh, you know, the last two times they've played the Chiefs, though, they've lost. Uh, but these are games that, that come down to one play here, one play there. Um, and the, the Ravens are that kind of team. Uh, I think we've all seen that kind of ability out of them. Now they're just going to have to go do it. Uh, but yeah, it's hard not to look at them the way Lamar is playing right now. 
uh, the, the de determination you kind of see out of this team, uh, they're certainly going to be there at the end of the year. And certainly Veterans Day on your mind this weekend. What, how, do we, how will you spend your Sunday and what sort of storylines are you watching around the National Football League on and off the field? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not working this weekend for ESPN, so I, I get to be home and, and uh, going to get to go to some of my, my kids' uh, uh, events, which will be great. But Are you, are you coaching, by the way? Are you, like, on the sidelines of flag football or anything like that? I, I help with the flag football a little bit, and I have fun. Assistant coach, uh, which is I, I, I do really enjoy, and, and certainly, again, I, how grateful I am for that, just to be a dad and be able to be able to go out and practice and play catch with my kids and, uh, again, uh, and I will be reflecting on that this weekend as well, obviously, with Veterans Day and, and what I can do moving forward. Again, so many connections that I made down at the Center for the Intrepid and, uh, you know, constantly, again, uh, how can I uh, be of service to our veterans as, as they've come back uh, and, again, into our community. And then how can people get involved with your cause and where can they find you on social media um, as they as they look to combine football yeah. and, uh, and and a passion for veterans. Yeah, uh, I am on Instagram. I'm not a big social media era, but you can check me out, uh, find me on there. Uh, but the big one, again, I mentioned it with USAA.com uh, slash Veterans Day. Uh, go on there, check it out. There's a ton of information for anybody out there that's curious about what, again, what they can do. All right, and if the flag football team um, – scores a bunch of touchdowns, post them to your Instagram. We'll, we'll run them on yeah, our television will, show. Will. That'll work. <laughs> awesome. Hey, thank you for your time. Thank you for your service to those who serve our country. And uh, thanks for joining the Extra Point Podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. The Extra Point Podcast is a production of 3TV, CBS5, and azfamily.com in Phoenix, Arizona.